I'm Eddie Conway. Welcome to Rattling the Bars. Sleep, it's a basic human function, and experts say it's the key to good health. But sleep is in short supply for prisoners in secure housing units in the Supermax Pelican Bay Prison in Crescent City, California. That's because authorities have been conducting loud and disruptive cell checks 24 hours a day. We heard from family members of 13 inmates who told us since August, prisoners have been denied adequate sleep due to 48 checks per day. As a result, these prisoners are getting much less sleep, persistently interrupted sleep, and significantly lower quality of sleep than before these checks started. It's a practice that is raising concerns from both families of inmates and advocates who say this is just another example of how our country's massive prison industrial complex dehumanizes inmates. On this episode of Rattling the Bars, we speak with people who are fighting to stop this irrational prison policy. Carol Strickman is a lawyer with legal services with prisoners with children. She has been directly involved in trying to eliminate the policy. A few years ago, a court order was issued to uh, implement 30-minute checks in all the uh, 30-minute checks every half hour, 24-7, 48 times a day in the isolation cells at uh, in California state prisons. And that's the what we call the shoes, the secured housing units, the administrative segregation, death row, uh, psychiatric uh, units, and so on. The Letha Hayden is part of the organization California Families to Abolish Solitary Confinement and has a son in Pelican Bay. I have a son that's in Pelican Bay, a secure housing unit and he's been there since June of 2015. Delifa is a resident of the Inland Empire, Southern California. Her son initially was in prison in the region, but last year was moved to Pelican Bay, roughly 700 miles away. Delifa describes the impact that the move had on her and her son's relationship. Before he was transferred there, when he was at Tehachapi, I saw him every other weekend. Then he was moved further away to Corcoran. I still was doing every other weekend, even though that was a four-hour drive. And then since uh, we went to, since he was moved uh, June 2nd of 2015 to Pelican Bay, I've been up there four times. And we have, when this uh program of 30-minute checks started being implemented there, which was just last August, uh, we heard just a huge amount of, of protests coming from the prisoners that we'd been representing. People in the Pelican Bay Shoe are not able to sleep day or night, so it's 24 hours. In addition to the buzzers, there's also the guards making loud, thumping noises. There's all, all the acoustics. For Bina Leah, is a human rights advocate with Prisoners Hunger Strike Solidarity, an organization that emerged from the 2011 Prisoners Hunger Strike throughout California. Verbena has been a leading spokesperson against the wellness checks. Tonight at 10 o'clock, it will be 120 days, 24 hours a day in the Pelican Bay Shoe of being woke up every 20 to 30 minutes. The warden from Pelican Bay explains the theory behind the checks as attempting to prevent suicide. The welfare checks were put in place, obviously, to check on the welfare of inmates, to um, mitigate issues of suicide, things of that nature, that are statistically higher within segregated housing units. But activists say that the checks are only creating more physical and mental harm. You know, we know from the science and from the experts on sleep that 
you know, sleep deprivation, persistent sleep deprivation can cause a myriad of harms, uh, mental and physical. And this is definitely not rehabilitative. It's destructive. People can't read, they can't concentrate, people are getting dizzy, they're fainting. Sleep deprivation like that can cause strokes, it can kill people. Studies have shown the importance of sleep to people's mental and physical health. Dalifa's son recently was hospitalized due to intestinal issues that may have been a result of the wellness check. Well, I found out you know, just last week that my son had uh, been admitted to the hospital for a couple of days and um, he had some intestinal issues. And, you know, just reading the professional studies that um, stating the effects of solitary, not only solitary confinement, but worse yet, the sleep deprivation could very easily be the result of, you know, the cause of what, uh, what was happening with him intestinally. It can um, reduce your appetite, it fatigues you, and puts a lot more stress on you. So then, you know, now he's going in with intestinal issues that could very well be a result of that. And, you know, to have to go to the hospital and get you know, a day of, of rest. According to the testimony of prisoners in Pelican Bay, the treatment they have been receiving is compatible to torture and it's a violation of the Eighth Amendment and also a violation of the Geneva Convention. One of our experts had uh, written that, you know, we're, we all know about the problem of suicide among uh, veterans that have come back from the, uh, Iraq and other uh, wars and conflicts, and one of the first things that they do when they try to help people that that are in that situation is to make sure their sleep is good. That making sure people have good sleep is one of the first things you do if you think they may have a tendency towards suicide. So we are, you know, here in the name of mental health, we're doing something that is more likely to cause someone to become suicidal. However, there is still hope. There is a lawsuit that has been successful in releasing people from solitary. The Ashker um, settlement has had a great deal of effect on it. It's moving a lot of people out of solitary confinement. The settlement has brought so many of our loved ones out. In fact, in our group, um, just myself and one other person, our loved ones are still there in Pelican Bay. So we're very hopeful. Um, that they'll be out soon. Additionally, Dalifa claims her son is a wrongful conviction. My son is a wrongful conviction, and prayerfully, very soon, uh, in coming years, one of these Innocence Projects, you'll see him and his name, um, you know, there is one of those that has been released. So we're still working on his case. We will continue to follow this issue as it develops. For The Real News Network, I'm Eddie Conway.